Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing two big things. We're going to be introducing a script into our game, so like right here, and we're also going to be uh, changing up exactly how our DS uh, map works and what we're using right here, the values that we're using right here. So we're going to start out with this. So instead of using a zero, we're going to switch over to strings. We've been using strings a lot lately, and it'll just be a lot more helpful than what we were currently doing. So here's how this is going to work. So, so if I press enter, then the string will add on an E. If I press N, then the string will add on an N. So it could be, I've pre I, maybe I've pressed enter two times, and now I've pressed N. And that is what the DS map is going to access to get the script that we're, like, or the dialogue that we're playing on screen. So, like, for example, this could be E, E, N, Y, E, N. So we can tell by looking at this that this person, when they played, they went, they pressed enter, enter, so they pre pressed enter twice, and then there was a choice, and then they decided no. And then there was another choice, and they decided yes. And then, like, it was just some dialogue. And then they decided no again. And then once they decided no, then this message displayed. So, we have this here. But how exactly will that work? Well, it's actually super duper simple. All we have to do is change this value to plus equal E. Yeah. And then on this one, we just do plus equals n. And on this one, we do plus equals y. So, yeah, we have all three. And then make sure they're capitalized, or if you want to do, you can do lowercase. And then this makes it a lot easier to add more keys. So maybe you could have like some sort of maybe button and have that be m, or whatever you want to add to your game. I'm going to delete that for now. And so yeah. So these don't really work anymore. So I'm going to quickly replace this with a little bit of work that I've been doing. I've started to um, add up my story and I have it on a different file right now. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. So yeah. It's kind of the same game but it just expands a little bit more. And you can see. So if they, so if they answer yes to the first question then they come here if they answer no to the first question they come here and then if they answer no to the first question um and continued on they'll go on to here or if they've answered yes yeah so as you can see so yeah i've fleshed the game out a little bit more and yeah so let's try playing this for once i might have missed something okay apparently i didn't welcome to the game are you a human no that's good. Alright, that's not good. We are sending you to the dungeon. Try to escape? Eh. Yes. Oh, I died. And then I press enter again, and that's as far as it goes for that s specific story. But, hey, that's a pretty good start, right? So, now that we have our branch and dialogue system sort of working better, and in a more efficient sort of way, I want you guys to flesh out your own stories. So you can go ahead and do whatever you want to your story. Make it as long and interesting as you want. Maybe even make it longer than what I've done and have s a bunch of separate stories and whatever you want. But once you've done that, we're gonna start working on a script. So, what is this script gonna do? Well, like I said before, it's gonna display one character at a time and it'll like do the whole thing. So, it's al so it almost looks like it's typing or someone's saying it or whatever. So. I actually created this script kind of separately from here. I'll copy and paste it in because, well, it's quite a bit of stuff. And we're going to want to look through it. So we have the script here. And we're going to want to rename it. So first of all, let's go and rename the script. Draw underscore text underscore speed. So you can download this file from Game Jolt, remember but you'll have to download the entire project to get it or you can 
look at all the code right now and kind of quickly pause this video and copy all of it. As, so I have ev everything displayed. You can just go back and look through it. But I'm going to go through and explain it all. So, this is a script. And the script is code that is um, ran inside of, well, wherever you put it. I can put a script right here, and I can run it. I mean, it's almost the same thing as just any sort of, any sort of function like this, like draw text. Like you, it's basically the same thing as a script where you just you run it inside your code, and you can input parameters or variables like these. My draw text speed here, it has one, two, three, four sort of parameters that you can input. It has the x coordinate to draw it at, the y coordinate to draw it at, the string that you want to draw, and the speed that the characters will appear. So let's go through this. So to start out with, it says if argument zero. So remember, argument zero is this. All right. So first of all, I'm saying if argument zero equals equals reset. Well, why do I say reset? It's supposed to equal this. Well, actually, this script has two functions. And actually, that might be a really good thing to put right here, too. This script has a second function. Resetting. Args argument 0 can be reset. So if it's reset, then it's going to reset the values that we have for this script. And then we're going to return. Why do we need to reset it? Well, we're using these variables here, but at the once it's being drawn and once the script is done with, it's not getting reset anywhere. So we're going to need to be resetting it inside our code ourselves. And putting it inside the script is easier than actually writing out the code for it. So, yeah, this simply resets it. That's all we need to know. And then we have draw text speed text right here. This is a variable that we're creating, and it's equal to argument two. What is argument two? Zero, one, two. It's the string, the string that we're inputting. And then as you can see at the bottom, it's getting used right here. Well, kind of in a complicated way. We'll get into that later. So next, if variable instance exists, and then we have this right here. What does this mean? This is an exclamation point. That means not. It's the opposite of this. So if the variable instance does not exist, because we have an exclamation mark here, there you don't have a ton of functions, and then you just write underscore not, because, well, I don't know. You just don't. You just put an exclamation mark. So if the variable instance does not exist, what instance? Well, first we need to have ID. So you can see here what we need to input. We need to input the ID. So we're talking about this ID. This ID is talking about whatever object it's being called from. Now this is all kind of complicated. Again, you can watch some more videos on scripts or read about it on the, the Game Maker manual. And so then we need the name of the variable that we're testing to see if it exists or not. And then it's the draw text speed timer. So if it doesn't exist, remember that, then we create it, and we create it equal to zero. Else, so if it does exist, then we just increase it by one. And then we do this again for the draw text speed value. The value is, um, it's a variable that we're using to keep track of how many characters we're drawing at any given point. So, if draw text speed timer is greater than or equal to argument 3. Now remember, we reset timer up here, and then we created it here, and we are increasing it here. And argument 0, 1, 2, 3, argument 3 is speed. So if this is greater than the speed, then we're going to increase the value, and we're going to reset the timer. Now what is this doing? This is going off every time it reaches this number. So, if, for example, if the speed is one second, this is happening every one second, which means that one more character is appearing every second. So if we have the word cat appearing, 
in one second it'll be a C in another second it'll be an A and then in another second it'll be a T and then it'll spell out cat obviously uh, so it so the timer needs to get reset every single time it occurs it's just all this code really is is simple stuff that you have to keep track of with variables so finally we're at the draw text now we're just drawing the text like we were doing before but for the x coordinate we're putting in argument 0 and the y coordinate we're putting in argument 1 so yeah the x and y again we want them to s we want um any place that the script is being called from to still be able to change the x and y variables and then right here we're using string copy now what is so special about string copy why are why are we using string copy well what it does is it allows us to take certain parts of the string like so what we're doing is we're taking the first uh, index in the string so I'll just do cat again so this is index 1 this is index 2 and this is index 3 so we start with the first index and then we go as far as the draw text speed value has us go and this draw text speed value is increasing here so yeah all we're doing is we're having the timer go off and it increases it and every single time this runs it's copying the string over and over again and that might seem like oh you're you're using up too much power on the computer but no it's just one simple operation that the computer is doing every single step every single frame that it's running and obviously a computer can do uh, I don't even know anymore like trillions of operations a second or whatever so it's not like it's that huge of a deal for a computer but if you're doing some sort of loop where you where you're running over the same code like a million times in one second then things start to become more of a problem so because we have this script now we don't need exactly what we had before so I need to go find quickly where everything is okay we don't need this oh. but anyways we can just do draw text speed and we can do well what do we want to do again well x y and the string we want to do is just string text again and what do we want the speed to be now let's try 0 0.05 room speed so you can just think of room speed as one second it just the room speed is how many frames exactly make up one second in the game and so we're just multiplying that by 0 0.05 so 0 0.05 of a second because we want it to uh, come along pretty quickly so now if I press play yeah so here we go we have that but we're gonna have one problem see when I press enter how they're all there already well what's going on well <laughs> can you guess it should be resetting remember that what we need to be doing is we need to be calling that inside whenever we're changing to a new string whenever we're having a new dialogue start so all we need to do is do this by simply inputting this code into all three of these different um, keys we can press we can just simply reset everything now let me save this and then let's play okay welcome to the game are you a human? Yes. Or no. <laughs> okay. We are sending you to the dungeon. Oh no. Try to escape. Yes. Oh, I died. Okay. So. We got a lot done today. We kind of learned how to use scripts. And, well, we've looked at some complicated sort of new techniques. And we've looked at using basically a lot of variables to get a, a complicated sort of thing done which in some ways might seem simple but as you code more and more some things are very simple to do but some things are very hard to do 
and certain programming languages are easier or harder to use. But anyways, that's just me rambling. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.